Welcome back to the Chad AC Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO. Joining me on the phones right now, National Press Secretary for the RNC, our friend Blair Ellis. Blair, welcome back. How are you today? Good morning. Thanks, y'all, for having me on. A pleasure to be with you. Always good to have you on, Blair. There's uh, Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, as we uh, as we get closer and closer to uh, to the national elections, uh, the former vice president Joe Biden he's in Texas. Uh, he stopped in, uh, I believe, Houston yesterday. He'll be in Dallas today, and uh, he's he's out uh, uh, rolling out spending plans. That's that's kind of what he's doing. He's talking about spending more money. Blair, uh, what uh, as far as the the Biden and and he's leading the race right now for the Democrats. Uh, he's appealing to Texas uh, right now. What's what's the reaction uh, from the RNC with uh, Biden being in the Lone Star State? You know, I, we're going to expect to see more and more candidates out on the campaign trail, uh, particularly, you know, as we get closer to the debates this summer. Uh, we're just a few short weeks away from those. doesn't surprise me to see Biden campaigning uh, in, in, in states. It does surprise me a little bit to see him in a state that um, it tends to tends to be a little bit redder uh, than, than perhaps what Mr. Biden is used to campaigning in. Uh, but, but good on him for going to a state that I think Trump uh, continues to do really well in. I think it's good for him to be out and about and see the success that's come from the Trump economy, particularly in how it's benefited and impacted states like Texas. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, Biden's going to have to answer for a lot of those failed policies under the Obama administration. And we're ready for, for voters and, and, and for Texans and for Americans to hold them accountable to those. You know, Blair, obviously, you know, Texas has been a red state for a while. Uh, it's a very if it's a very important state. And it's a state that, uh, you know, national media says it's changing there, I think the national media hopes that it goes blue uh, in 2020. Uh, I think I know the Democrats want it to go blue in 2020. I know y'all are paying attention to the state. How is the president doing in Texas right now, polling wise? So we tend to not do a, put a, put a ton of credence in, in polls, especially this early out, um, just because I think that, that past history has shown us uh, what happens when you put too much weight in a poll. Right. Um, you, you start to see people discount people like pre- the now president. Um, but we're certainly not taking a single state for granted. We know that, that you know just because a state has gone red in the past or has a history of going red does not mean it's going to stay that way. You can't take voters for granted. You can't take a state for granted. And, and we know Texas is one of those. Um, we know that Texas has really thrived because of the Trump economy and because of a lot of the, the principles and, and the, the legislation that this Congress and that this president have put into play. Um, that's what this president's going to run on. That is what you're going to hear him talk about. Like that's what you hear the vice president and the president talk about, especially as, as they kick up these rallies they're doing. You're going to hear them talking about their record of success and their legislative accomplishments because that's something the Democrats simply don't have to run on. Um, and so that's really what we're going to lean into. That's really what you can expect uh, our, our, our record to be over the course of the next uh, 16 months as we charge towards uh, next November of 2020. Uh, but we feel good about uh, about the state of things, and we feel good about, about Texas. But, again, we're not taking anything for granted. You're going to see us, the RNCs, out in full force there. We're going to keep growing our infrastructure and making sure that people know what Republicans are doing for them. Absolutely. Uh, visiting with Blair Ellis, National Press Secretary uh, with the RNC. Let's talk about something that the president is trying to do, and, and that's uh, with, with regard to trade, and uh, the, the president really wanting, you know, really wanting to reform uh, NAFTA. It's got a brand new name, uh, but it seems as though Blair, the Democrats are standing in the way of getting any new deal completed here in the United States. What, what's what's going on with this? You're spot on. So at this point, we continue to know that that. USMCA is, is something that the president has really worked hard to, to revamp since he came to office. It's something that's been a priority of his since he was on the campaign trail. Uh, I think at this point we know that America's farmers, manufacturers, ranchers are all desperately awaiting for Nancy Pelosi to bring the USMCA to the House floor for a vote. Um, today we're going to see Secretary Sonny Perdue travel to upstate New York to discuss the impact of the United States-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. We're going to see Vice President Pence tomorrow in Canada to meet with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to push for ratification of this. So we're really kind of doing a full court press right now. We know this is a big priority, not just for the president, but for the American people. And there's no question that there are Democrats in the past who agreed NAFTA needed to be revamped. Well, this president came in, this president revamped it. Uh, we've got a, a, a very good kind of proposal package put together. It's something that deserves to be voted on in Congress, and it's certainly time that Nancy Pelosi took it to the House floor and allowed for that due diligence to unfold. Do you think that the Democrat-controlled House would vote for it? 
I've heard at this point, and we heard this morning, Mr. Uh, the Vice President's Chief of Staff believes that it will absolutely garner support from Democrats in in the House. Uh, yeah. And I think there are a lot of Democrats out there that recognize that what we had before NAFTA was broken, and there were a lot of ways that we were being taken advantage of because of NAFTA. And so USMCA is an excellent alternative. I think it's going to create a lot of opportunity uh, between the United States, Canada, and Mexico for greater economic prosperity. There's several different provisions in it that are going to allow for automotive manufacturing investments in the U.S. There's going to be uh, upwards of $23 billion for purchases of U.S.-made automotive parts. Um, we're going to see a lot of new jobs come from this. We're going to see an increase in GDP and employment growth. We're going to see an increase in U.S. exports to Canada and Mexico. So we need to see. Nancy Pelosi needs to bring this USMCA to the House floor. I do absolutely believe it would garner with it would garner bipartisan support, and I think Nancy Pelosi just needs to to put her money where her mouth is and let the, let her caucus vote as they will. Blair, do do we know? how Canada and Mexico feel about that? I mean, are they on board? It's just Nancy Pelosi standing in the way at this point? So at this point, what we have has been made in conjunction uh, with our with our friends in Mexico and our friends in Canada. And again, I think that the fact that we've got, you know, the vice president going to Canada tomorrow to meet with the prime minister of Canada to push for ratification of it goes to show that, um, that there is discussion uh, with our with our neighbors about the importance of this, that there is a conversation that has been taking place over the course of the last several months as we've been working to really get this deal in a good place. Um, and at this point, it's just time that we let, we let Congress vote. We let the people uh, decide what's best for the American people, for our neighbors as well. And again, there's a lot of opportunity here for the U.S. economy to grow. There's a lot of opportunity here for the manufacturing sector, the automotive sector, um, and we're going to see some really awesome some new jobs as a result of this. So time for, time for Nancy Pelosi and her caucus to, to maybe side with the U.S. economy and with jobs for a change instead of just standing in the way, obstructing and resisting. Visiting with Blair Ellis with the RNC. Uh, Blair, as you know, uh, Robert Mueller is set to speak at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, here in Texas. Uh, any expectations? Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure he hasn't tipped you all off as to what he's going to say, but any expectations on this and, and any expectations that uh, this will, whatever he has to say, will finally uh, make the Democrats move on? You know, all we know is that there's going to be some kind of statement made today at 11 o'clock. There's not been a lot revealed about what's to be expected. Um, so we're all going to be tuning in just like everybody else. But at the end of the day, the statement today is not going to undo anything that we already know. We know there's no obstruction. We know there's no collusion. Uh, we've seen Attorney General William Barr be trans transparent and forthcoming every step of the way. So bottom line, Democrats, I'm sure we'll find a way to kick and scream about whatever comes up today at 11, but it's not going to undo <laughs> any of the findings that we've already seen. Blair, I have a question, and I don't want to put you on the spot uh, sure. with, with this, but it, it's a, it's an interesting story. Out in Alabama, you've got Roy Moore, who has signaled that he's thinking about running uh, uh, again uh, for Senate. The president tweeted out this morning, Basically, yeah, that's not such a good idea. I don't think he'll win. When, when you have the president of the United States tell a anybody, whether it's Roy Moore or you know me, whoever, maybe you shouldn't run for office. As as the RNC, how do y'all deal with that if that person decides to run and ultimately wins a primary? How do y'all balance what the president wants versus what? You know, you want to win a seat, obviously, in the U.S. Senate. How do you balance that out? Sure. So the RNC, the Republican National Committee, has a kind of a longstanding precedent of not getting involved in primary races. Uh, that's kind of where, where we've always been on the issue. I will say, though, that oftentimes um, if the president chooses to weigh in on something, that's really the only time we'd ever step in in, in support of the decision that the president makes. Um, but our thought is that the decisions that, that are made um, when it comes to primaries should absolutely be made by the people of that state. Um, and, and so, you know, that's a decision that comes down to whatever the citizens of Alabama or, or where have you, um, what they decide on is, is, is what they decide is best for them. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, if the president chooses to, to kind of step in, or weigh in one way or the other. Um, that's the only time we would ever. Um, that's the only time we would ever get involved in a primaries. But at this point, Mr. Roy can certainly do what he sees fit, um, and, and we'll see how that shakes out over the course of the next couple months. Uh, but I do think it serves as a bit of a maybe a, a thought process, a thought provoking process, if you will, for him before he makes that decision. Uh, it. Absolutely, it's it's one of those where if you're a Republican, obviously you want the backing of this president, and if you don't have it, that's. That's a bad thing. Uh, Blair, uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, National Press Secretary for the RNC. Uh, we'll always enjoy having you on the show. We'll visit with you next time.
Thanks so much, Chad. Pleasure is all mine. Have a good one. That's Blair Ellis with the RNC, uh, press secretary for the RNC here on the Chad Eastie Show.